Hey guys, in this video, the penultimate video of unit two, we are going to be talking about percent of change. I like this unit because this unit has a nice tie in with chemistry and with physics and other science classes. We do this and use this concept quite often in those classes. So let's dive in and take a look at it. So when we're finding the percent change in something, what we're usually doing is we're talking about something where we have an original amount, a starting amount, or I can spell original, right? <laughs> Some original amount, it could be dollars, it could be number of bugs, it could be whatever else. And then, <coughs> excuse me, and then we have a final amount. Right. So if we want to find what percent change between the start and the finish, we follow the same steps every time. Basically, we take the final. And then we subtract the original or the initial. And then we divide that by the original. Original. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> Didn't look right, but that's and that will give us the percent that the thing has changed. Now let's let's put some numbers on this and then we're gonna do some word problems to kind of cement it even better and get it all in even more, 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 all that kind of stuff. Let's, let's do a problem where the, this is going to be the examples. Do example one. And for this one, we're going to have the original be B 20. This could be dollars or peanuts or fish or who the heck knows. Doesn't matter. We're just kind of getting the steps down. And the final amount B 23. So when we're finding a change in or a delta, we see that in uh, science classes a lot, delta something. Ain't right. We take the final and we subtract the initial. So for this one, the final is 23. And then we're going to subtract the original, which is 20. And then we're going to divide that by the original, which was 20. So 23 uh, minus 20 is 3. And we're going to divide that by 20. Now, for these, since we're trying to convert to percent, we actually do want to get the decimal equivalent here, right? <coughs> Sorry. They do it different than what we're going to do. So when you divide 3 divided by 20, you end up with 0 point one five now to convert that decimal into a percent what do we do with that well we move the decimal twice right and so we end up with 15 percent so the last thing we need to figure out is whether this was a 15 percent increase or a 15 percent decrease. Well, that's kind of obvious when we look at a really abstracted, boiled down problem like this one, right? Because we started at 20 and we went to 23. So clearly that's an increase. But as we get it more and more complicated in our word problems and all those things, it might be a little less obvious sometimes. And so what we're looking for is, did our answer end up positive or did it end up negative? Well, in this case, it ended up positive. If we end up with a positive percent change, then it's an increase. So the answer to this problem is a 15% increase. All right. Let's do another example. Oops, yeah, that's right. 
Okay, so example number two is we're going to have the original. B25 and the final B17. So we're going to take the final and we're going to subtract the initial or the original. And then we're going to divide that by the original. So in this case, 17 minus 25 is negative, right? That might give you a clue what's, what's going to happen next, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So we end up with negative 8 over 25. So when we divide that and we get a decimal equivalent, we end up with negative 0 0.32. Now we need to convert that to a percent. So we're going to move the decimal over twice, once, twice, right? So our final answer is negative 30, whoops, 32%. Now, it's negative, so our real final answer is a 32% decrease. You'll see in some texts and in some online spaces where they put a negative 32% decrease. Uh, I don't really like that notation myself. I feel like it's, it's almost a double negative um, and kind of redundant and possibly even confusing. And so I, I prefer to write positive 32% and then get the negative by writing decrease. Let's look at a couple of word problems, a couple, couple of three word problems. See if we can apply this con same concept. So the total number of passengers on a cruise ship increased by 14% from 2010 to 2013. If there were 20.98 million passengers in 2013, how many were there in 2010? Now, in this problem, we kind of we it kind of gives us some different amount of information. So if we, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use uh, I for initial, right? So if we want to figure out the formula. Right, so if we want to kind of write this as a formula, it would be the final minus the initial. I'm going to use I for the initial because O is O is a confusing letter because it looks too much like zero divided by the initial, and that equals the percent times. Now to move that decimal over. How do we move the decimal over? Well, we move, we do it and we multiply it times 100, right? So that's what we've been doing in all those examples, right? We, we did this bit and then we multiplied it times 100 to convert that decimal into a percent. So let's see if we can figure out what's, what's going on here because they give us some different things. In this problem, they tell us that the percent is 14%. Now, if we want to go ahead and multiply by 100... So we're kind of doing this part out over here. And we end up with, except we, well, no, that's going to be confusing. <laughs> LOL, JK. We're going to have to write that percent as a decimal in order to use it. But we'll deal with that in a second. Because of, of what I done did. All right, 14%. And then let's see, what else they give us? If there were 20.98 million passengers in 2013, how many were there in 2010? So this number is the final amount because it goes with the later year and not the earlier year, right? So our F is going to equal 20.98. I wrote this wrong, didn't I? We'll just say that equals the percent. 
as a decimal. We'll just convert it here in a second. So we want to know the initial amount, right? So we want to know I. That's what we're looking for. That's annoying because that's the one that shows up to all places. So let's start filling in numbers, right? So if we want to put uh, the final, we're going to substitute it in for F and substitute it as 20.98. We don't know what the initial amount is. The percent, now we're going to have, I was saying it, the reason why I had to erase that earlier, I don't know if you figured that out or not, but it's because in order to put this in, this P in here, we need to convert this to a decimal. That's where the, the thing is. So we actually want to divide it by 100 to convert it to a decimal. So it's going to be 0 0.14, right? So this is going to be 0 0.14. Sound good? Sound nice? Sound like a good plan? All right. So let's see if we can figure out what's happening here. So we, you could think about this is as two different in two different ways. You could think about this as in order to get rid of this I, we've since it's divided into everything, we've got to multiply it off. You could also, if you wanted to, think about it as a proportion, which I think is the way we're going to kind of look at it. It's, it's correct either way, but we're going to look at it that way because we just got through talking about proportions in our last lesson. So I think it'd be a good time to, to do it this way. So we've got a fraction equal to another fraction, right? Excuse me. So if you have a fraction equal, not times, but equal, gosh, got hiccups all of a sudden, equal to another fraction, then we're going to cross multiply, right? So one times anything is just itself, right? So over here, we're going to have 20.98 minus I equals I times 0 0.14 is 0 0.14 I. Now we're going to get the I's together. So if we add I to both sides to get rid of that one, Those eyes cancel. I'm going to move all of this, this up over here. Kind of running out of room. I'm writing, writing too big. I'm going to write smaller. But I want to make sure you can see it on a little tiny phone screen. So trying to make that easy to see. So remember that if there's nothing there, there's an implied one right here, right? So 0 0.14 plus 1 is 1 1.0, excuse me, 1.14. So we have 1.14i equals 20.98. Now this 1.14 is multiplied onto the i, so to get rid of it, we're going to divide both sides by 1.14. So I, the initial amount, the amount in 2010 is, let me punch that in my, I mean, look at my notes, is 18.4. <coughs> We want to keep the same number of sig figs. We can say 18.40 million, right? I want to make sure and keep. It's not really units, but it's it's consistency. In word problems, we almost always have some word sticking off the end there, right? So there's that one. Other than the little bit of confusion with the 100, but I think we got that cleared up. If not, let me know in the comments and I can take a look at it and all those kind of things. Or let me know in class. Let's do another example. Okay, Marta is purchasing wire and beads to make jewelry. How fun. Her merchandise is $28 before tax. That would be the initial amount, right? So I is going to equal 
$8.62 before tax. If the tax is 7.25% of the total sales, what is the final cost? Now, so this one, we're going to kind of look at, the, well, I don't know. I'm tempted to look at this. We, we can look at this problem a couple of different ways. We're going to actually look at this one the way that you would typically think through this problem. There are at least three different ways of looking at this problem, I think. But typically, when we're calculating tax, this is what we do. When we're finding a percent. You remember, it's this is really important. Then when you're finding a percent, you're pretty much always finding a percent of something. Now, if you remember back to our writing equations lesson, of means times. So you're pretty much always going to be multiplying a percent times something else. Okay, so the percent in this case is 7.25%. Now, in order to use a percent, is what I was alluding to and trying to think through last problem, you have to convert it to a decimal. How do we convert it to a decimal? We move the decimal place over twice, once, twice. So 7.25% is 0 0.075, right? So we're going to find that many percent of our initial amount, okay? So we're going to do 0 0.0725 times 28 point six two which is going to equal the amount we're going to pay in tax right so we multiply that out uh let's see do i have that nope i don't have it because they didn't do it that way which is fine let me grab my calculator real quick boy that's insanity so 0 0.0725 times 28.62 equals, so our tax amount is, let me switch over colors so we're kind of changing the steps. So our tax amount is 2.074. Now, that's how much we're paying for in tax. So we need to go back in this word problem. We need to see, are we, <coughs> excuse me, are we, is that our answer? Can we circle that and move on? Or are we looking for something else? So what is the final cost is what we're looking for, which is not this. If we're getting that, we wouldn't be paying tax. We'd be getting an amazing discount, which would be really great, but no. Okay, so in order to find what we're actually going to pay, how do we do that? Well, we add that to our dollar amount. So we're going to add 28.62. Oh, that was there. 2.0. It was sitting right there. That's great. So when we add that, our final amount is, it's not going to be very visible, is $30.00. And 69 cents. Now, remember that we always write our cents. If you don't, if you just write, if our answer, say, was $25.50, it would be wrong and incorrect to write that. That's not how we write math. That's not how we write math. That's not how we write money. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. Don't even be that guy. So $30.69. All right, one more, and then we are out for this video. This is a little longer, but that's okay because we've been doing it. We've had several that are shorter. All right. Now we had several little five-minute ones. So one that's more like the, our normal 20 minutes. I think I think you'll live. I think you'll probably live. All right, since Tyrell has earned good grades in school, he qualifies for the good student discount. What a stupid name for a discount. <laughs> On his car insurance, his monthly payment without the discount is $135. If the discount is 20%, what will he pay each month? 
Okay, so before the discount, he's paying $135. 20%, we need to convert the percent to a decimal, 0 0.20, right? Move that decimal place once, twice, blip, blap. So that's converted. Find a percent of something, we're going to multiply. So we're going to multiply 0 0.20 times 135 and that's going to give us the discount right so we multiply that out we end up with 27 so since that's a discount what are we going to do to find the answer there so we're going to take our original amount 135 dollars and subtract $27 to get what he's actually going to pay. And at the end of the day, he's going to pay $108 instead of $135. All for being a good little boy. Good job, Tyrell. We're all so proud. Hope your parents are super proud of you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you're one of my students, do your homework, see you in class, study for your tests, all the things. If you're not one of my students, all of our Algebra 1 videos are free here on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching. Check out what else we're doing over at EmberLearningLabs.com. Make sure you give a like and a thumbs up or a subscribe, whatever the heck you do here on YouTube. Y'all know what to do. Have a great day. Bye-bye.